Russian narrative about the war has been constantly changing. It started with liberating Ukraine, denazifying it, and it went as extreme as preventing the Third World War. And today, Russia indirectly threatened NATO, which honestly doesn't look even close to alleged liberation of Ukraine, and especially not the prevention of the Third World War. So what's the main goal of Russia in this war, after all? What's happened, yes, recent people of Reddit, it's the Russian dude, and this is your daily update on Russian-Ukrainian war as of April 20. You can see the main events of the day to my right, along with the timestamps. So if you are interested in any particular event, feel free to jump straight to that part of the video. Otherwise, please stay for the entire video so that you can be fully informed on anything significant that happened recently. Sergei Karaganov, who is the political scientist of Russia, is indirectly hinting us that Russia is planning its attack against NATO. His exact quote is that Russia is now considering how they can suspend the flow of new weapons inside Ukraine. According According to him, this might force Russia to launch missile attacks against military objects outside Ukraine. And those new military targets that are still inside Ukraine will be mainly in the west of Ukraine. In addition to that, Russia has been testing today super heavy intercontinental ballistic missile called Sarmat. And President Putin commented himself that at this very moment there are no equivalents to this ballistic missile. He said that this will be the appropriate response for those who are not thinking about what they say. And by the way, if you like this style of daily news reporting, feel free to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Also, I'll be donating all of my Patreon memberships at the end of each month to Ukraine. So if you want to be a part of this group donation, make sure to check the link in the description. In this video, you can see Russian students being taught how to dig trenches, which suspiciously look like graves. According to an intercepted call between a Russian Navy soldier from missile cruiser Moskva and one of his relatives, the main goal of this Russian Navy flagship was to capture Odessa. And once again to show really quick, Odessa is the southern city on the territory of Ukraine. According to this intercepted call, the goal of Moskva was to provide fire support for paratroopers that were supposed to land in Odessa. And in case this mission would have succeeded, Russia will gain extreme reinforcements in the south of Ukraine. But because the flagship is now sunk, I think this mission is no longer an option. Some Russian candy manufacturers started producing this candy, which basically is a Z letter. And I guess it was just someone who thought that let's make the youngest of our Russians to be patriots since now. The advisor to the president of Ukraine, Alexei Arestovich, voiced his perspectives about the liberation of Kherson. And just as a reminder, Kherson is the southern part of Ukraine. At this very moment, Kherson is one of the main places on the territory of Ukraine, where there are currently military confrontations. But because Ukraine was able to sunk the flagship of Russian Navy called Moskva last week, the counterattack of Ukrainian forces on Kherson region now became much easier. Alexei Arestovich mentioned that in order for Ukrainians to succeed in this territory, they need weapons. And in case Western countries do indeed send weapons to Ukraine, this counterattack will be much easier. But in case the weapons will not be sent to Ukraine, the counterattack will be much harder, but Ukrainians will never give up. He estimates that the dominance of Ukrainian forces against Russian forces in this territory is approximately 55 against 45. The commander of Ukrainian Marines, Sergei Valina, said that there are two possible outcomes of the events from Mariupol. Just as a reminder, Mariupol is this city in Ukraine where the Azov-style steel factory is located. And according to Russian site, this is the headquarters of the most nationalistic battalion in Ukraine called Azov. For this reason, one of the hardest fights across entire Ukraine right now are happening inside Mariupol. And just yesterday, Russia was bombing this steel factory extensively for an entire day. So, according to Sergei Valina, the first possible outcome of conflict in Mariupol is political and diplomatic resolution, which in very basic understanding means the creation of humanitarian corridors so that civilians can escape the city. And the second scenario is basically the continuation of military conflict on this territory. Vladimir Zelensky mentioned that Ukraine is still considering releasing Russian prisoners of war in exchange for humanitarian corridors for civilians in Mariupol. On this map you can see the current condition of this so-called military operation of Russia in Ukraine. There were no significant advancements by Russian army today and Ukraine was able to hold its ground. According to the Secretary of the National Defense Council of Ukraine, Alexei Danilov, the full-scale invasion of Russia into Ukraine has not started yet. He thinks that all we see right now are just these separate military operations 
operations across the entire territory of Ukraine. And that for the next couple of weeks, Russia will be bringing even more reinforcements and concentrate its main attack on the east of Ukraine. At this very moment, there are currently presidential elections going on in France. And two possible candidates are the current president of France, Emmanuel Macron, and challenger Marine Le Pen. Just a couple of years ago, the difference was very slim, but as you can see in this very picture, recently Emmanuel Macron started gaining more support. And one of the potential reasons why this happens, it is because of alleged connections of Marine Le Pen to Russia, which by the way, I was assuming in several of my past videos. And I'll be more than happy to tell you about them once again. First of all, Marine Le Pen mentioned that in case she wins the presidential elections in France, she will make France leave NATO. And second, she was one of few Western politics who was supporting the annexation of Crimea by Russia in 2014. She was also not acknowledging the genocide of Ukrainians in one of her most recent interviews. And one of the main opposition forces of Russia, Alexei Navalny, who is currently in jail, was also urging the French people to vote for Emmanuel Macron. He is also accusing Marine Le Pen of corruption and connections to Russia and Putin. In this picture you can see a person who was protesting against the war and he is from Yekaterinburg, Russia. And what makes this protest to be special, it is because the quote that this guy was showing said the following. War makes it easy to cover the failures in economics and social politics of a government. And the rightful owner of this quote is no one else than Vladimir Putin. Today, the president Vladimir Putin gave several statements to the people of Russia. First of all, he mentioned that since there are no more fast food restaurants in Russia, the overall food quality in Russia will increase. Second, he says that he is afraid that video games become more popular for kids rather than books. And in this case, I guess it's kind easier for the government to control what our young children read, but it is much harder to control which games they're playing, especially that you can download them illegally. The next thing he mentioned is that he supports the idea that before school starts, Russian students must raise the Russian flag and sing the Russian anthem. And finally, he said that the return of Russians who are currently abroad back to Russia will be much easier. And I mean, I guess in order to keep the balance in Russia, the return will be much easier, but leaving Russia will be practically impossible. The Minister of Education of Russia, Sergei Kravtsov, is saying that Russian school children must learn the purpose of this so-called special military operation starting next year. And I guess one of the only reasonable questions in this case would be which other useless subject they will remove so that they have more time for this new class. I guess my assumption would be to replace either English language or sociology. The press secretary of Russia, Dmitry Peskov, mentioned that Russia Russia has given Ukraine the document, which includes all the peaceful resolution points. He also said that now Russia is waiting for the reply from Ukrainian side. But at the same time, neither Zelensky nor his staff has confirmed the receivance of this document. Today, Russian federal media said the real difference between war and special military operation. Very briefly, according to them, war is something that takes lives and special military operation is something that saves lives. The Chinese payment system called Union Pay will not replace Visa and Mastercard in Russia. As you might already know, almost in the very beginning of this so-called special military operation, Visa and Mastercard announced that they are leaving Russian market. What this meant is that all the cards issued inside Russia are no longer accepted outside of Russia. And basically the opposite is true. All the cards issued outside of Russia will no longer be working inside the country. In response to that, Russians said basically, we don't need to worry about this, we have our Chinese friends and we're gonna be using Union Pay. But today, the representatives of Union Pay said that most likely they're not gonna be operating in Russia because they don't want to be sanctioned by the US because of this connection with Russia. There has been a survey about the residents of 27 different countries, how they feel about this situation in Ukraine. And here we have the results. Approximately 82% of respondents consider Russia to be a world threat. And 61 1% of those people think that the events in Ukraine are also threatening their own country. 74% of those people who took part in this survey think that their countries must accept refugees from Ukraine. And only 17% of respondents think that their own countries must send soldiers to Ukraine. And finally, approximately 67% of people are constantly following the news surrounding Russian-Ukrainian conflict. Wikipedia now officially has the article about Russism. And 
for those of you who do not know what this means, it is basically the combination of Russia and fascism. There is no unified definition of this term yet, but basically this is the superiority of one of the neighboring countries. Thank you so much for your attention, stay safe and see you tomorrow for the special episode.